But, uh, yeah. What really happened to this aspiring voodoo priestess who unalived on a Haiti retreat? Dana Jackson went to Haiti for a voodoo retreat and never to return following an alleged heart attack. Maybe she appropriated? I don't know. Why do you? I, it's not my faith. So I don't know really what to say, but whatever. I don't understand it. So I'm not going to say nothing because I'll mess around and put my foot in my mouth. And I don't want to do that, especially when I'm live. So a North Carolina man didn't know July 1st would be the last time he saw his mother alive before she embarked on a trip to Haiti for a religious retreat. However, the details surrounding her unaliving are nothing short of a mystery. <sighs> last month, 51-year-old Dana Jackson traveled to Haiti for a long uh, for a month-long voodoo retreat, according to US T Today interview with her son Timothy. He told the outlet she'd been researching and practicing the religion for the past four years. The religion of voodoo, not voodoo, traces back to West Africa and eventually migrated to Haiti, where those who practice say they serve the spirits. According to a Harvard University article, their rituals, including singing, drumming, and dance to manifest spirits to take possession of a devotee. That sounds suspicious. It is very sad. No, no person. I know it eventually happens, but no person should lose their mother early or uh, father. Or, no one should lose anybody early. Honestly, Jackson aspired to be a manbo. I said manbo with an N or priestess. Her son told U.S. Today. Timothy said uh, she joined a group called themselves Sol Soliete and played and planned with to go, uh, planned with to go to the Haiti retreat together. The trip was supposed to go from the 1st of July to the 26th. However, toward the end of the retreat, Jackson's son tells reporters he became suspicious and this is what he said. If you do any research about that part of the ceremony even just on Google, it'll tell you that's very sacred and things of that nature he said. So she sent me one last me message on the 13th and she said we will talk on the 21st going to church tomorrow. Jackson and his mom spoke every day. The no communication part was nerve-wracking to him, but he wanted to uh, respect his mother's decision to participate in the ritual. In the last message he received from his mom on July 21st, she asked him to pray for her. That whole entire week, just kind of low key, I was having anxiety because I'm not able to hear from her. And I know that this is a very important part of the ceremony, he said. On the 21st, I didn't hear anything from her. I did reach out to her at about 5 p.m. on WhatsApp. I didn't get any response. On July 22nd, Timothy said he received the news from his grandmother that his mother passed away while on the trip. In investigating what happened on his uh, to his mother, he ran into a number of red flags. The first concern was when he reached out to one of the group leaders who asked him, how much do you know? What the hell kind of question is that? Woo! Already there's a red flag. The next red flag came from the claim that Jackson became seriously ill during a ritual ceremony and fainted, Timothy said. However, when she gained consciousness, his mother apparently didn't recognize where she was. Timothy was told. Instead, she thought she was in Virginia, where she and her son lived over a year ago. I wonder if she was there alone. If not, that's too bad. She was with a group. They had all planned to leave the U.S. to go to Haiti together. She was with a group. They said that my mom didn't bring her medicine, so there was a red flag because what medicine are you guys talking about? It sounds like they were trying to perpetuate, uh, perpetuate a story, he told USA Today. Timothy still awaits details on how to transfer his mother's remains, but tells the outlet that he hasn't gotten any word from the U.S. Embassy in Port-au-Prince or any officials who could help. However, he maintains that foul play was behind the mysterious unaliving of his mother and said he's already sought information on obtaining an independent autopsy. Oh, Lord, that sounds like something. I hope she didn't sign no papers. To be completely honest with you, my initial thought was my mom went down to Haiti. They did this last piece of the ceremony and something sinister happened, he said. Let's see what else it says. Somebody send me a text. I hope it ain't nothing bad because I've had enough. All right. So that looks like that's the end of that story. That's horrible. I, I don't know what to tell you. That's so messed up. Really. I I, I don't know. Um, Really. I really don't know what to tell you. It was just 
horrible to hear about that. Like I said, I hate losing people. I've lost quite a few people uh, recently, and I, I don't think I really want to hear much more. Young relatives, too, and that's the sad part. Whew. But anyways, um, we're not done. We are not done because um, we got some more dumbasses running around who think that shit don't sink, apparently, and they can say whatever they want to anybody. So let's check this one out. And then the smoke got me. You won't believe what this San Francisco waiter wrote on a black family's receipt. So if y'all can see here and they went ahead and they uh, they went ahead and they erased the missing letter. So you go ahead and guess that they just decided not to uh, use the ER. They use the AS. Yes, it does sound like foul play, too. But uh, yeah, this is some messed up shit. And of all places, oh, God dang it. Okay, y'all can probably see it better here. But uh, all I got to say, of all places, you, you, you did it in a, what looks to be a Hispanic restaurant or uh, a Brazilian one. I can't really tell. So it either, it, either way, it's a person of color. It's a person of color restaurant. When Whitney Washington and her family decided to take a vacation to San Francisco last week, they were hoping to take in some nice views and visit some fun places. For the first, uh, for the most part, they did until they visited a particular restaurant that had the worst customer service possible. Not surprised, exactly. According to KTV, uh, KTVU, on August 12th, after Washington and her family ordered and received their food from Pika Pika Arepa Kitchen, a Venezuelan restaurant in the Bay Area, the receipt for their order read, here, niggas. Look, I know what the hell it stands for. I'm not going to hold back. Even with the racial slur on the receipt, Washington and her family checked the receipt of other customers to ensure that theirs was the only one that included a racial slur. Uh, Washington recalled looking at another receipt and when, where it said here niggas on hers it uh, on hers it only read here on theirs. Uh, Washington said she returned her food and asked for her money back. An explanation I pointed to the in, uh, here n word and I said, "Do you know what this means?" Said Washington. He didn't say no. He said, "I don't know how that got there." Ooh, deflection, people showing who they are has always been yeah pretty much but they just have the audacity now oh yeah they should they really should well i already said what the name is there so i'm helping it's called pika pika arepa um the next day after the incident the manager of the restaurant notified ktvu that the employee was fired immediately and was shocked to learn that the waiter had no explanation for why they wrote the racial slur the waiter allegedly tried to threaten the manager, saying that he was going to sue her. The manager retorted, "I, but I say, come, I have it in writing. Local authorities received a police report about the incident, but it's currently unclear what action will be taken. Whitney Washington says, regardless of how some people in, uh, integrate the N-word into their daily lexicon, that's not the case with her family. I know some people use the term culturally interchangeably. That is not a term I use in my home. Washington said, I don't use that word. We don't call people that word. Nobody calls us that word. My mother doesn't use that word, so you will not see me using that word that much. I, I might let it slip from time to time, and I always use the A-S, uh, but I prefer to say ninjas. So when I say ninjas, I don't mean shinobi. I mean the god dang, um, you know. Uh, now, this one... I don't know how y'all want to take it, but I take it as fuckery. That's why I still look pissed off. Get ready for some bullshit. Ex-officer convicted. Okay. Uh, Ex-officer, uh, current convict in uh, George Floyd's uh, murder, released from prison. So this was reported yesterday. Somebody need to whoop his ass. Thomas Lane, one of the former Minneapolis police officers convicted in George Floyd's unaliving, has been released from prison per CBS News. In May 2020, Lane held down Floyd's legs as fellow former cop uh, Derek Chauvin knelt on his neck for over nine, minute, uh, nine minutes unaliving the 46-year-old man. Video of the unaliving sparked uh, protest and a racial reckoning nationwide. Lane was found guilty in 2022 of violating Floyd's civil rights and sentenced to 2.5 years in federal prison. Not enough. 
The ex-officer was also convicted on state charges of aiding and abetting manslaughter and sentenced to three years. Lane was serving his federal and state. That See, you bastards. So y'all going to get let him. He needs to do it consecutively, not concurrently. You assholes. You wouldn't do it for. <laughs> Anyways, Lane was serving his federal and state sentences concurrently. His federal sentence ended on February 26th. You need to do that consecutively, you asshole, because of all the years that man could have lived. Lane served his sentence in Colorado. He is set to go into supervision following his release. Chauvin was handed down a 22.5 year state uh, sentence on unaliving manslaughter charges in 2021. He also pled guilty to violating Floyd's civil rights and is serving his federal and state uh, sentence simultaneously, which means this asshole is going to get out earlier than he should. Jackass. J. Alexander Kuhn and Tao Thao, former officers who were also convicted for their involvement in Floyd's unaliving, were sentenced to three and 3.5 years, respectively, on federal for civil rights charges. Needs to be longer. Kuhn also pleaded guilty to state charges of manslaughter and was sentenced to 3.5 years. Thao was convicted of uh, second degree aiding and abetting manslaughter and sentenced to nearly five years. Their federal and um, state sentences are also being served concurrently. You jackasses, you couldn't, you just had to baby these motherfuckers. Adjacency, that's all I can say, adjacency. You know they took the life of a man, even if he wasn't a great man. He took the life of a man. And those years that that man could have lived, they owe that family. And they should be under at least half of the years that man could have possibly lived. So a man is supposed to be able to live up to what? 65, 75. The man was 40 something. Y'all need over 30 years each. That's all I got to say about that shit. But anyways, let's look into some shit. It's not. Look, I'm not just coming for white people. Here.